is Dr. Clayton Lane. The topic of this video will be anterior cruciate ligament, purpose, and problems. In order to understand the ACL and its role, it's important to look at the biomechanics and the anatomy of the knee first. The simplest way to think of it probably is to think of the knee as a hinge. It's a little bit more complex than that. The ACL, PCL, MCL, and LCL the four ligaments of the knee actually work in concert to make a hinge. Here you can see two of those ligaments, um, the ACL here in the middle of the knee. If you look at the back of the knee, you can see the ACL again, and then also the PCL going the other direction. The way the ACL and the PCL cross in that position is what gives them their name, the cruciate ligaments. What you can also see here is the lateral meniscus and medial meniscus fairly well. If you put that in motion and take away a portion of the knee, you can see what the ACL looks like through a range of motion of the knee. As the knee flex, the tibia tries to slide forward, and the ACL is what prevents that. So again, if you look at the four ligaments of the knee, we talked about the medial collateral and the lateral collateral. Those two ligaments prevent side-to-side -side motion of the knee. So let's take a look at that. Here we have the MCL from the front, looking at the front of the knee. Here you have the MCL, again, now looking from the back of the knee. Again, you can see the ACL here, PCL here, and the meniscus on either side, and then here's the LCL. But again, focusing on the MCL and the LCL, what motion does that prevent? Well, it's the side-to-side -side motion. Here you can see a diagram of the knee going back and forth. The MCL prevents it from opening up, so to speak, on one side, as the MCL, which goes from here to here, tightens up with that motion. In contrast, the ACL prevents anterior translation of the tibia. The PCL prevents posterior translation. So if you summarize that, ACL, PCL prevent anterior, posterior translation. Medial and lateral collateral present side to side motion of the knee. So again, here's the ACL. Here's the ACL from behind, PCL from behind. What motion does the ACL present, prevent? Well, here you see a computer animation of the Lachman test, which you've probably heard a lot about. That's where the examiner tries to pull forward on the tibia with the hand and see how far the tibia slides anteriorly. And if it does slide too far, then that's called a positive Lachman test. There's three grades of the Lachman test, which can be subdivided, so it's a little bit more complex than that. But you can see that that tibia is loose in this patient, and the ACL is clearly out. How does the ACL get injured? Con and contrary to what uh, people often believe, this is actually a non-contact deceleration type injury. It's most common in 10 to 30 year olds. It's actually more common in females than males. And again, contrary to what people believe, it's four times more common in basketball and two times more common in soccer than other sports, even though people sometimes think of it as a football injury. 40% of the athletes will hear a pop at the time of the injury, and they commonly develop swelling in two to three hours after the injury. This is not a perfect picture of the mechanism for an ACL injury, but if you can imagine this athlete running full speed in one direction, planting his foot, trying to cut back the other direction, you can imagine the powerful quadriceps muscles here contracting, well those are connected right here to the tibial tubercle, that pulls forward on the tibia, and if that force becomes too extreme in a large athlete like this, then that can pop the ACL and the tibia slides forward. If you put all that together, if you see on the field a non-contact injury in which the athlete was decelerating and then the knee immediately swells up, studies have shown that that's an ACL tear 70% of the time without getting an MRI or any other examination. Why is the ACL injury problematic? Well, the issue is, is that ACLs do not heal on their own. Here you can see a nice diagram of the blood supply to the ACL. These black lines are blood vessels. Here's the ACL heading this way. Again, you can see the PCL crossing over, giving it the cruciate pattern. And what you can also see is that there's synovial fluid surrounding the ACL, meaning joint fluid and no blood vessels. And this 
goes circumferentially around the ACL. So the only blood supply comes through the lining of the ACL, which is called the synovium. And so you can imagine if the ACL gets torn right here in the middle, then the blood supply is disrupted. And the joint fluid that surrounds it has very little nutrients in it and very poten little potential for healing. And so that's the issue with why an ACL is important and why it can't heal. In contrast, if you look back at the MCL that we looked at earlier, this ligament is outside the joint. So when it tears, there's still blood vessels surrounding it immediately. So if these uh, ends of the MCL are held close together, then that can potentially heal. Again, the ACL is inside the knee, bathed in joint fluid, and therefore cannot heal when it tears. Here you see an intraoperative photograph of an ACL. You can see that it's bathed in synovial fluid. The blood supply comes through this fluffy material, the synovium. So if this tears, there's nothing to support healing. And here's what results. This is an ACL tear. You can see how the body has uh, atrophied the ACL, walled it off, and there's really no potential for this stub to heal to either bone or to the other end of the ACL. Well, if your ACL tears, can you live without it? I've done an extensive amount of research on the motion that occurs whenever the ACL do does tear, the pathologic motion, and that's thanks to modern technology. You can see what we have here is basically a high-powered uh, medical version of a Wii game console. You have ultrasound, uh, excuse me, uh, sensors that uh, we can attach to the knee and are picked up by the computer. We then are able to paint out the surfaces of the knee using a pointer and then analyze the motion. And so the way I like to present this is I always say ACLs don't hurt. Right? And this is true. The actual ligament tear doesn't hurt once the initial swelling is gone. What does hurt is the chronic rotational and anterior instability which leads to recurrent injury and those further injuries to the meniscus and cartilage, that's what hurts. The complex motion that results from an ACL is way, well I should say is much more complex than the anterior translation I described earlier with the Lachman test and that's what my uh, research focused on. If you look at this diagram here, again from one of my papers, you can see that the normal path of motion of the tibia is the knee flexus is this white line which is superimposed by a blue line. So as the knee bends, the, ace, the tibia normally follows a path of motion that looks something like this. Okay. When the ACL is out, however, this blue P-shaped path of motion is what results. So the tibia will rotate and slide forwardly, forward, excuse me, that's where you see the Lachman test, and then pop back into place. And that kind of motion, which you can see here, an action. Here in action, excuse me, is what causes trauma, further trauma to the knee. You can see how as the tibia slides forward and rotates, it can bang the meniscus, which is here. It can also bang into the cartilage up here, leaving bone bruises, etc. Um, here's an MRI picture of the knee with the ACL out. Here's where the ACL should be. It'd be a, a solid black line here, something like this consistency. Well, it's torn right there. What you can also see in this MRI of the same patient is that there's bone edema, bright white, in the back of the tibia and in the front of the femur. And that's where the tibia slid forward, as you saw in this diagram, and this portion of the tibia banged into the femur there. So that's going to cause injury to the cartilage. That's going to cause injury to the meniscus, which is this black triangle. As it slides forward, it's going to bang into that meniscus. It's going to cause recurrent swelling of the knee, as you can see here. And so over time, that's going to cause additional trauma to the knee. So in summary, the ACL serves to prevent anterior subluxation and rotational instability of the knee. The ACL, unlike many ligaments, cannot heal on its own. If it's left untreated, progressive injury to other structures in the knee may occur and arthritis may result. Thank you.